Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to work on a really beautiful painting, something with a vast sunset and maybe a little mountain in the background. It'll be a lot of fun. Also, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for future painting videos. Let's get started. We'll start off today with our two-inch brush and a little bit of yellow and white to make a beautiful light golden color. And right up here, we're going to do a little sun. And we'll start by putting a little color down. Obviously, I've got my normal sketch on the canvas. I'm sure you guys know exactly exactly why that's there. It that helps to keep us on track and keeps us from doing anything too weird. <laughs> there we go. For the first time, actually, for the first time ever that I can remember, I ended up sketching this bit here with the detail round simply because the filbert, when I was trying to sketch, it was too big. I wanted this mountain to seem small so that it looks far away. And in order to do that, you have to have small brush strokes, very tight brush strokes. So there you go. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough of that golden color. Now I'm just going to drop in a, a little cloud over here. And as you can see, I've been working on this area just a bit. I'm using a, a very light, soft gray made from brown, black, blue, white, and red. All those colors together sort of make a gray. There. Now, oh, let's connect this right here. Now this sky is based off loosely, obviously not perfectly based loosely off of a sky that we had here oh, a couple weeks ago. It was so pretty. It was right around sunset time. And so this is, this is right off our back porch. So we're going to spend a little extra time on the sky. In my mind, oh, the sky is kind of a feature today. This is sort of one of the exciting parts of the painting to me. There we go. So we'll spend a little extra time on it simply because we can. This is just the dark part. Well, it's not even the darkest part. This is just part of the dark part. <laughs> so anyways, there you go. Next with a little bit of black, blue, and red, not much red, I'm going to come up here and begin to drop in our dark part of the, of the clouds. There. Allow this to mix with what you have down. Now, obviously we've haven't done the lights yet, and we'll do the lights pretty soon. I just like the idea of getting the contrast elements in first, which is the dark. You need the dark in order to show the light. There. And then we'll make a decision on, oh, how we want everything else to kind of fall into place. Now with our little three quarter brush here, I'm going to just start, start from the sun area. I'm going to lightly touch and just pull away like that. I'm skimming the surface so lightly that when I look, I even see the tooth of the canvas showing through. So I don't even touch hard enough to push it into the holes of the canvas. <laughs> that gives you a good idea of how light I'm actually touching it. I'm just pulling out these sun rays. If you push any harder than the way I'm pushing right now, oh boy, get ready for a big mess. And look, I even, as light as I was when I restroked it, I, dro I drug the dirty dark color back into the light. So you got to be careful not to do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in our little mountain back here with our three quarter brush, just because it's in my hand and was working so well. There. I want to do this fairly lightly so that it shows up just a little against that background. I may even darken up our clouds we have the freedom to say, you know, I'm going to darken those clouds because they don't show up against the mountain. The mountain show, doesn't show up against them. <laughs> Depends on how you look at it. Okay, well, anyways, let's go ahead and just fill this in right here. And this here is going to be, oh, slightly darker. Maybe real brown and black. All right, I'm going to throw that in. Good. Now using our three-quarter brush, I'm going to simply drop in another mountain here. Now what I'm really doing here, I'm trying to keep this whole entire area fairly dark to contrast against the sky. If you make it too light, it just won't show. Oh, well, the sky won't pop. It will show, but it won't pop. And so we're trying to get it to pop as much as possible. All right, there you go. So I'm going to just simply cut it in right here. And there. All right, we'll worry about trees and things on it later. For now, get just a nice variation in color. So I grab some brown, grab some green, grab some yellow. See how you get the variation in there? <laughs> Nobody paint a flat mountain. We don't want that. Paint mountains with a little bit of life in them. All right, 
Next, I'm gonna drop on a few highlights here to some trees. I'm gonna break this area up into two, two areas. The background mountain and something that's just a little closer. They may be attached to each other or maybe one's just in front of the other. I really don't care. That's sort of not, not really the concern. What I'm doing here is I'm picking out highlights of these trees. You could do this with a fan brush or other brushes like that, but you'll get better variation and a more refined professional look if you spend the extra three to five minutes it takes to actually put these in. I mean, we're talking about a, an area that's a couple inches long here, well, a few inches long, and it doesn't take that long. So you have to, you have to think before you do the, the really fast, because you could you know, get in here and get this done in five seconds with a fan brush, but you have to ask yourself if it's worth it. Sometimes it is, but for me, in my painting, I think that in this circumstance, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint these trees in one by one, varying the color, leaving different pockets of, of shadow and movement. That way I'll get a slightly more refined and detailed look. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the right-hand side and work on this area. And it's very similar to the trees we painted on the left. However, there's a difference here. On this side, the trees are really small in the background, just where you're gonna to touch with this brush. And I'll kind of work them up the mountain just a bit. Very subtle, I don't know if you can even see that. Probably can't. Just a little bit of color there. Very subtle. Okay, and then as you move forward, I want you guys to get them a little bit bigger. So to do that, simply take your brush, give yourself a little line. Yeah, we're gonna paint little trees. And I'm, obviously it's too small to do any kind of detail, but I'm just sort of, you know, following that line, sort of pulling out these little, little limb ideas. And it's just basically that light on the dark. I'm gonna quickly scrub in right here, just a little bit of yellow and green. Now, obviously I don't want this to be too dark back here. This is just the underpainting. <laughs> now, if you're asking obviously why I, d I don't wanna do this, it's because if you're new here, it's because I like to have, even in my underpainting, some depth. There. If you don't have depth in your underpainting, it's going to be even more challenging to, you know, to highlight properly and, and to make it look good later. Now, you can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. I was just saying I found this makes things a little easier, so why not? Give yourself every advantage that you can when you're doing this, right? There we go. I'm leaving this area unfinished just because I know I'm going to do some trees there. As I come down, black. Throw some deep, deep black down here and work the two together. Also, as you can see, I threw a little brown in here just to indicate a small road. We had that in the sketch there in the beginning, so just thought I'd start working on that. Now with a very, very bright mix of yellow and white. No green in this because I know it's going to mix with the underpainting. I am just, I'm going to think about my light source, think about my meadow here. And while doing all that thinking, I'm gonna drop in these beautiful little highlight areas. See that? Now, you've got a lot of options on how to use this brush. You can simply set the paint down, stroke it up and down like this. Oh yeah, that gives you some soft, soft effects. You can just pull it. You got some options. You can use the fan brush too. We might do that later. For now, I wanna just work. The fan brush is good as you come forward. For now, I just wanna work with the filbert though. See how you can use it? use the side of the brush. For the most part, this like going in straight like a pencil doesn't work too well. So try to use the flat end of the brush. There. And once you get a little bit of this in, quite a bit of this in, then you can start working in your green tones just to, you know, say, you know, this grass is in fact green. This is a very lush area wherever this is. Actually, these, I'll tell you where this is. The mountains back here are Canada. It's actually uh, from a photo that we took. So we have two different photos together here, which is kind of cool. Now, before we go too far here on the grass area, I'm gonna go ahead and begin to highlight our road there. And then this is one of those little roads that cars would drive on. So we're gonna have it split. That's why that has that split there. This is where the cars don't touch. This is obviously where the wheels go there. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this color, maybe a little, this is just a little brown and white, and a little more brown in it every once in a while to change it up. My little detail brush, because it gives me a lot of small textures, and small textures are usually really nice in roads. It makes it look like dirt and stuff. You have a lot of little variations. Good. Of course, you want to focus on all the beautiful lighting and, and all that. 
So I'm gonna keep it brighter in the background, slightly darker here in the foreground to help lead the eye back into the painting where we want it to be because in our painting today, oh boy, the interest is really over there on the mountain and on the sky. Nice. And this can be trimmed as we put the other things around the grass and stuff, it didn't matter. So I'm just kind of getting it in there rough, very quick, developing some beautiful light. Watch this, the light's kind of filtering through. And maybe a couple of little shots of light right here. Good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make some very tall grass here in the foreground and then melt it into the background. So I just, I'm just stroking it right down like this to create the, oh, the nice little grass areas. As we come back, smaller strokes, and it blends it right back into the background. Pretty simple. Really a lot of fun, actually. Be careful not to overdo, because the minute you start overdoing this, you're going to detract from what I want the feature of the painting to be, which is obviously the background areas. And it's kind of different. You know, a lot of times you want the foreground to really, you know, be one of the one of the big things in a painting. One of the main features is generally the foreground, at least in my paintings, but not today. I really don't want to put much emphasis on the painting. It doesn't mean you leave it unfinished. No, you can't, can't do that. And I'm even about to throw some flowers here in just a minute in the, in the foreground. So it's going to be highly detailed, but it's going to be subtle. And that's just what you need. You can't leave it unfinished. Now I'm going to take this little detail round brush and, and just very carefully drop on a few bits of highlight, some larger evergreens quickly just smudged them in. Very easy to make those little kind of mid-sized evergreens. Now I'm just dropping a bit of the light out on top of the limbs. There. See how that works? Make some sparkle. I don't want too much so that they would stand out a whole lot, but they do add something there to the mid-ground areas. Now, unlike Normally, because let's face it, this painting is not over overly normal. We are not going to have any foreground elements that are huge. You know how like, normally I would like want to put a big tree or a huge boulder. We're not going to do any of that because because it's just the way I want to do this painting. Kind of, a, I just want to try play around with different styles of subjects, and different ways to work out a painting. So we're not. We're just going to let it be an open meadow. And I think that's cool. I think it'll really, really have a nice effect. There. So these are going to be the last, the closest trees that we're going to paint today. Now with our little detail round brush and a soft purple color, I'm going to drop in some flowers. And I don't want them to be too big. I'm just using my little brush kind of flat and there, just dabbing and dotting. Nothing too bright. Nothing too big. I don't want. I don't want it distracting. If you get them too big, it will be distracting. So don't do that. There and then, as they go back, they get smaller. See that? Good. The reason I chose purple. You could use whatever color you want, but the reason I chose purple is because it ties in with the sky. It really helps to connect the entire painting with color, which is fun. Gotta love that. A little summer, a little more blue. Some are a little more red. It's up to you. I'm using a mixture both because that's kind of cool. And I'm using this brush very flat in order to get a lot of a lot of beautiful texture in my flowers. Nothing too large. And anyone that gets kind of repetitive or, you know, you can always cover those things up with grass. All right. Do some on the other side. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, and I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.